yo, the time is now for us to be about what we sing about, what we preach about, what we read about. Yeah. Y'all ready? Let's go. Come on. We thank you, Lord, for being in your house. We enter your gates with thanksgiving, and we enter your courts with praise. And we say, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we'll be glad in it. We thank you that the devil is defeated. We thank you, Lord. How can two walk together except they... We're going to finish the job. So, sometimes people think, you know, they, they live in the present tense. Uh, and, and they think, well, because things are the way they are, I'm going to just drift away. People have backslid. They've left church because they, they believed a lie. Believe the lie of the devil, and then that word was 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 uh, somehow minimized in their mind, and the devil elevated the stuff that's going wrong. When things are going wrong, you know what needs to be elevated? The word of God. You know what really needs to go up? The word of God. You know what needs to be emphasized? The word of God. I, I, I think I said it last week too. The worst thing you can do when you're drifting is to leave church. Listen, if, if, if I'm already drifting and, and somebody has a life raft of 50 feet and I'm 45 feet away, I can get that. It would be crazy for me to paddle out beyond the reach of the, of the, of the life raft, right? It, 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 it doesn't make sense to go to anybody but the Lord. We, we sang a song back in the day, you know, where will I go but to the Lord? I think it was Philip. The Lord uh, asked the question. He said, will you also go away? And you know, Philip said, where are we going to go? Who are we going to go to? Uh, th there's, only, there's only one, and his name is Jesus Christ. And so can a person drift away from God? Most people drift, begin to drift because they either have sin in their lives or they feel guilt because they're not coming to church or they're reluctant to pray or maybe a prayer wasn't answered or maybe something went wrong uh, and, and they decided, well, you know what? This isn't working for me. Can I tell you what will always work for you? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to his own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. Sometimes where you are doesn't make sense. Lord have mercy, I've been in the places where things didn't make sense, but I held on to the promise. God promised me he would never leave me nor forsake me, and sometimes I felt like Job, I couldn't find him. Lord, where are you? You know, sometimes I wanted to holler at the moon. Sometimes I just wanted to get away, just be lost. Just leave. I didn't want to talk to him, but I didn't want to think. I wanted to shut my mind off, and I couldn't. The only thing that was constant in my life was the Word of God. I thank God I fell in love with the Word of God a long time ago. The Word of God fascinates me because he said, the Word of God is a living thing. Can you drift away? Yes, you can drift, but you can get back again. Amen. I, I'm, there are people that I know that drifted way away. And like the prodigal son, they came to themselves. You know what the prodigal said? He was out there fighting with, with hogs about with pig food. I sure wish I had some pig food. And, you know, he tossed him, you know, the, the pig got, got some of his food, and they was trying to bite the same piece of pig food. And he said, wait a minute. This don't make sense. He said, I'm going to rise, and I'm going to go back to my father, and I'm going to say to him, Father, I have sinned. And, don't, you know, I don't have to be your son. Just make me one of your hired servants. And you know what? And this is Jesus telling the story. He said the, the father had gone uh, day by day looking for his son to come back. He'd, go, he'd look over the horizon and the son wasn't back. And he looked one day and there was that prodigal, drifted, ugly son, did all this stuff, got his inheritance and went out there and went with prostitutes and he's just having a good old time until, can, can I tell you one thing? Are you listening to Bishop Foster? Let me, are you saying this all let me tell you one thing. Good times don't last. You want to you please your flesh? Guess what? It's not going to last. 
right? The only thing that's going to last is, is your relationship with Jesus Christ. The only thing that's going to last. See, you got you to be tethered to Jesus Christ. You got you, that rope. The Bible said, be very sure. Your anchor holds and, and grips a solid rock. That keeps you. Matter of fact, let me talk about that. I should never talk about things like that that's in my soul because I can think of so many things. You know, a ship, uh, I was on a big uh, uh, a cruise ship, you know, three, four, five thousand people. I mean, this thing was like a city uh, on, 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 the, on the ocean. And they would get at a certain place and they would drop this huge anchor. And you know what the anchor did? It kept the ship from drifting. Because as big as that ship was, wind would blow that thing. You know, we, I was, one night I was on the cruise ship with my wife, and one night, man, we was trying to have dinner, and, and the ship started rocking like this because the wind was blowing it. That thing must weigh millions of tons, and the ship still moved it. And so, you know, it had to be a, some kind of anchor, but they would drop that anchor, and it would keep that ship from drifting. Listen, if the ship needed an anchor to, to keep from drifting, don't, don't you think you do? Don't you think I do? Because, can, can, I, can I be honest with you? There are things that could pull me away if my anchor wasn't there. Oh, yeah, with Bishop. Bishop, I, you have the Holy Ghost. You've been baptized. There are things that could pull you away. Yeah, because you know why? I know that in me, that is in my flesh dwells no good thing and there are things that can pull at my flesh but my soul is anchored and it keeps my flesh from drifting away and what is an anchor that anchor is that constant reviewing of the word of God I, you know sometimes I got to remind myself you know I'm more than a conqueror see you got to remind yourself I'm more than a conqueror I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. The Lord said he'd never leave me nor forsake me. Lo, he's with me always, even to the end of the world. And when, when you, when you uh, keep that in your mind, you know what that does? It anchors you to, to who you are in the Lord. I, I want to be, here, here's what the Lord said. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But we can kind of push away from him. It's not because he's not with us. He loves us. I mean, there's no way I've got uh, two wonderful sons and two wonderful daughters. I don't want them to, to hurt themselves. I don't want them, to, uh, uh, I don't want them to, to be in danger. I love them. They're my children, right? I've got some wonderful grandchildren, some wonderful great-grandchildren, and I don't want anything to happen to them. You know why? Because I love them. And, and God also loves us. We're his children, Amen. God loves us. Matter of fact, he said we could call him Abba, Daddy, Father. Right? And, and so when we drift and the Lord sees us drifting, you know what he does? He does everything he can so that we don't drift away from his reach. I, I love that song by Kirk Carr. He said, uh, the Lord reached out and grabbed me and held me close and wouldn't let go. That's happened to me. Man, if, especially when you want to go. Here's what I love about God. When you want to go, when you want to go. Uh, we were talking about kids running away. And, and uh, uh, sometimes kids, let me go. I want to run away. Let me go. And you know what mama does? She grabs them and she holds them. Let me go, mama. Let me go. No, you ain't going nowhere. Mama, I'm tired. I want to get away. No. Yeah, that's what God does. Sometimes he holds us when we want to leave, when we want to give up. And, and what, what is that? Is, that a, is God physically holding us? No, it's that, that word that you have that's keeping you from drifting away. Let me get, I'm teaching this thing all over again. Let me see. Uh, how do we know we're drifting from God? This is what I told you last time. This is, this, these are just the, the high points. How do we know we're drifting from God? Well, we become aware we are wandering from God when we, number one, here it is, spend little time or no time reading the word of God. Number two, spend little or no time praying. Number three, and we're not affected by the good news or the power of the life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ like we once were. And number four, we spend little or no time fellowshipping 
with other followers of Jesus. And so what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to give you some markers. You know, how come you didn't tell me, Pastor? Well, that's what I'm trying to do now. If you, if you lose your enthusiasm for the word of God, if you lose your desire to be with the saints, you lose your desire to come to church, lose your desire to read the Bible, lose your desire to pray, then you gotta say, wait a minute. I, I think I might be drifting. And what do you do when you think you're drifting? Well, you look for, you look for a way to get back, right? You're looking for a way to, 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 to make up the distance where you've lost, uh, uh, fellowship and you're no, no longer close to God, now you start making up. So what do you do? You pray, you fast, you read your Bible, you get with people that love the Lord uh, and you begin to just uh, praise God because of who he is. Because he loved you so much he died on the cross. You, you think God would die on the cross and then think it would be okay for you to die? Not a chance. Not a chance. And so uh, I'm, I'm giving you some, uh, the bad news is that people drift. The good news is they get back. Amen. I don't, I don't want to give you one side. I'm giving you both sides. But I want to warn you because in a pandemic, as I said, we have all this time on our hands and, you know, it's depressing and, you know, you, you, you can't do what you used to do. And, and you're just going through things. I mean, you know, sometimes I'm tired of, of not being able to, because uh, I'm a hug. I want to hold. I want to shake hands. I want to, I want to see people. I want to be in the group. I want church to be back like it was. And, you know, it, it, it bothers me, right? And so what I've got to do, I've got to make sure that while I'm going through this pandemic, I don't drift away. And, and people drift away. Did you know there are pastors that have driven, drifted away? There are preachers and teachers and singers and deacons that have drifted away. It, it's, not, it's not something so unusual. But the good thing is that when you're really saved and committed to the Lord, God will bring you back. Hallelujah. Here's things that cause us to drift uh, spiritually. And I'm just going lift, to lift, list them to you because I'll get, I'll get into them again. Number one, our schedule can't be out of control. You can't have so much, doing so much that you can't have time to pray. No time to fast. No time to fellowship with the saints. No time to, to, to worship. Uh, when you get the time with, I don't have time for God, you already know you're drifting. Because one of the things that God said, he said, I'm looking for worshipers, right? I, I, you're not supposed to be saved and just sit there until God comes. As, as I was saying the other day, I think it was uh, talking to the, the mothers on, on the line. Uh, when, when God saved us, that's an investment. He invests in us. And with the investment, you know what he expects? He expects a return. If I put my money in the bank and they say you get 2% interest, uh, then when, when I come back after that an, annual period or whatever the period is, and when I, if I put $100 in, you know, give me my interest. And if they don't give me my interest, I want to know why, right? Well, when the Lord gives us the Holy Ghost, he doesn't want us to come to, uh, to heaven. All right, David, what'd you do? I didn't do nothing, but you gave him the Holy Ghost. I, you know, I had it. I, I didn't lose it. The Lord said, no, I gave it. That, that was an investment, son. And so what you do, you find out what your gifts are. One of the things that keeps us, us, us from drifting is, is to be occupied. The Lord said, occupied till I come, right? And so the worst thing you can do in the pandemic is to do nothing. You know, if, if you're just sitting at home, if you're rocking in a chair, or, or you know, you just, well, let me look at TV, and you look at all the issues, all the episodes of Law and er Order. I won't say Law and Order, Law and Order. And you look at uh, you know uh, uh, comedy shows and what's that guy's name? Steve Harvey. Uh, uh, I forgot the name of his show. Anyway, the, that Steve Harvey show. We're there. I forgot the name of the show. Lord have mercy. Anyway, uh, if 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 that's all you're doing, then you're not. TV is not going to grow you, right? Law and order is not going to help you grow in the Lord. You have to, you have to spend time in the word. And, and here's what you have to do. Let me tell you, because our flesh is flesh, we don't automatically do what we need to do. So you've got to, you've got to say, all right, I'm going to schedule time uh, for Jesus. I'm going to schedule time to pray. And I'm going to schedule time to fast. And I'm going to schedule time to read my Bible. Don't let church be the only time you uh, read your Bible, the only time you hear the word. 
Because the devil will take advantage of you. If it's, if it's only Sunday, Wednesday, well, you got Monday and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday for the devil to mess with your mind. Every day, give us this day our daily bread. You've got to do something every day. And if you've got a gift, if God has given you a talent that you can use where the church can benefit from what you know, if you've gone to college and you've got administrative skills or you've got uh, uh, typing skills, office skills, if you've got uh, media skills you, or the Lord tells you you're a prayer warrior or whatever it is, you've got gifts in the spirit, you know, you can uh, lay hands on the sick and they can recover or, or you know how to uh, organize. I mean, all the things that God has given you and you can give back to the church, do that during the pandemic. Find a way. Be creative. And when you do that, as, as a pastor, it's hard for pastors to drift because we always got something. <laughs> you know, somebody needs something. Somebody wants something. You know, you got to, every Sunday, I got to be ready to teach. Every Wednesday, I got to be ready to preach, uh, ready to teach on Wednesday, preach on Sunday. You know, I have uh, the, te the telephone lines, the morning due at 6 o'clock in the morning on Monday. You got the mothers at 11 o'clock on Thursday. And all, you know, I got all these emails I get, and I get all the things I've got to do, all the administration of the church, watching the budget. Right, you know what, what, how the saints are doing. You don't want to make sure the the, the sick are visited. I want to make sure things are going well, uh, and and so I don't, you know, with all of that, I I don't have time to drift, because I'm I'm busy. I'm, I'm I'm active. I don't like the word busy. I'm active doing things for God, and and if if you're just bored, and you know well, I'm I'm bored, well call me. <laughs> If you don't have to go to the church, just call me. I'll push you to work. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll count beans or something. I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll get you busy doing something. The worst thing during a pandemic you can do is be bored. Because in your boredom, the devil will tell you. Matter of fact, most people get angry during the pandemic. Because, you know, now you've got time to think about the, who, who wounded you and what, what they said. You've got time to think about. You know, I remember back in, in 1952, and I, I remember in 1975, and that, that person, that old, what's called so-and-so, and, and you got time, all that junk gets in your head, and, and, and now you, you, need, you, need, you need to get all that stuff out. You need to wash out that stuff out, and the, the way you wash it is to fill it with the word. See, here, here's what you got to do. It, it's, it's good to empty your mind, but it's not good to leave it empty. Because if you leave your mind empty, God, the devil will fill it right back up. So as soon as you get all that junk out of your mind, and, and you got to actively rebuke it. you got to say, have you ever fussed with yourself? I'm tired of this devil. Get out in the name of Jesus. And you know, here's a part of, here's what I pray every, every day. I said, Lord, I thank you. I said, I've got a burning desire. I said, what's going on in my life is urgent. I said, I have faith. Satan, I resist you steadfast in the faith. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every demon I cast out now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you like it's already done. I call those things that be not as though they were. Father, bless me indeed. Enlarge my borders. Let your hand be upon me that I neither cause nor receive pain. Bless me above my brethren. Favor me, Lord. And I go through that exercise and, and what I'm doing, I'm making sure that there's no room for the devil to get in my mind. And so I'm talking to think things that I ought not to think. And he allows me to drift. And so uh, out of control schedule, misplaced affections. One of the, the worst things people can do if they're just newly saved is to hang around with the wrong crowd. When, when you get saved, you got to come out from among them. The, the worst thing that a, a new saint can do is to stay with the old crowd. You know, if, if, if you're saved and now uh, your, your old crowd is in the bar or your old crowd is uh, doing all kind of uh, skullduggery, uh, your old crowd is doing things that are not of God, so you got to pull yourself out from that. Otherwise, you'll, with them, remember I said earlier, they will help you drift, right? And so uh, misplaced affection, discouragement, I did a whole series in Bible class on discouragement. It's, to be discouraged is, is a hard thing. I've been discouraged. I've been depressed. There have been times I didn't even want to get up. Hey, man, you know, one of the things that's good about pastoring is that, that you find out you can be transparent. 
when I first started pastoring, I thought I couldn't tell nobody what's going wrong. You know, who's that? That's Superman. That's, look up in the air. It's a bird that's playing. It's Bishop. <laughs> oh, no, it ain't. <laughs> look down. Look down on the roof. Look, look in the bed. Look who won't come out from under the covers. That's Bishop. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know what's good about God? It, it's, it's good. And I'm telling you this so you'll know it's not that unusual to have these 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 discouraging times when when Joshua was ready to go into the 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 promised land when when uh, Moses died you know what the Lord told Joshua be strong and be of a good courage because he knew that those people was going to get on Joshua's nerves they got on Mo Moses was 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 so fed up with them <laughs> he, he he wanted he wanted to die and wanted to kill them uh, he said uh, Make a make a make the Lord even told him one time Moses had he had this uh, dual issue the first time the Lord said let me kill him and I'll make a, a new nation uh, you can be the head and the Lord said no you kill them kill him. Moses said you kill them kill me too but then he got so mad if you remember this is what caused him not to go over the Lord said speak to the rock <laughs> and Moses got that rock bam he hit the rock he said drink you rebels and the Lord said, no, you dishonored me. People, and so Joshua had to deal with those same people that Moses uh, got upset. And the Lord said, hey, uh, Joshua, build good courage. You're going to need courage. You know what discouragement is? Let me tell you what, what discouragement is. It's the lack of courage. It's, it's when you need to push ahead. You don't have the courage. It's, it's like you, when you run out of breath, you run out of energy. And you know, you, you, you're almost there and, and you're almost to the finish line. You just don't have the strength to get there. And discouragement is like the discouragement said, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. But then the Bible comes back and says, I can do all things through, through, through God, through, through Christ that strengthens me, right? I can't, I can't, I can't. Then the word says, you're more than a conqueror. Right? And then he said, I can't, I can't, I can't. With men, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. See, what the word does, it, it gives you an answer to all the things the devil's telling you as to what you can't do. And so what is the word of God? It's the sword of the spirit. It's the sword of the spirit. And so when the devil tries to slow you down, you come back, you come back with the word. When the Lord was tempted of the devil in, in, the, uh, in the wilderness, every time the devil said something, look back, come back with the word. He, th that taught us something, that when the devil tries to smack us down, you come back with the word. But how are you going to come back with the word if you don't know the word? And so I'm, what I'm suggesting to you right now is that you got to, you have to, you must know the word of God. Let the word, here's what he said, let the word dwell in you richly. Don't, not just a couple of verses. Let the word dwell in you richly because it, it's good to know a baptismal scripture and it's good to know a prosperity scripture. But sometimes I need to know a discouragement scripture, right? I got to know in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 8 and 9, it says you're troubled on every side. Yet not distressed, perplexed, not in despair, persecuted, not forsaken, cast down, not destroyed. I, I was uh, rehearsing that the scripture just a couple of days ago, uh, and, and I was at my desk, actually, and I was, I was thinking about this subject, and I thought about that verse. It said, we're troubled on every side. And I started thinking about all the things that trouble the pastor. I said, yeah, I, I've been troubled. And he, said, but he, said, he said, but you're not distressed. I said, no, I'm not, I'm not distressed. All the stuff on the, on the outside, but on the inside, he said, you're not distressed. Why? There's something special about us. The, the, no, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And, and, and you got to know that. You gotta, because the devil will tell you, no, you can't make it. You can't take it. And you got to say, yes, I can. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Glory to God. Y'all got to pray for me. This, this lesson is so hot. I, I could teach this for a month. Pray for me. Good God Almighty. I'm seeing all kinds of stuff. Discouraging. Troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. Perplexed. Woo. Lord, when I think about perplexity, you are looking like at a man you were looking at a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, a husband, a father, a grandfather, a great-grandfather, a papa. <laughs> Amen. That has been perplexed. Th things, things come to me and that, what am I going to do? I don't know. But then I go to the scripture and say, oh, you know what the Bible says? It's okay to be perplexed. 
You know, sometimes we think it's not okay. What's wrong with me? I'm perplexed. <laughs> Nothing wrong with you. You're just perplexed. But then it comes back and says, but no, uh -uh, not in despair. I don't care how perplexed you're getting. Don't, uh -uh, mm -mm. don't, don't be good. Don't lose no courage. I'm perplexed. I don't know what to do. I'm 75 years old. I've been perplexed a lot. I got a right for his perplexity. <laughs> I think I got a t-shirt. I need to have a t-shirt that perplexed. But you know what? Not in despair. Persecuted. People lying on you, cheating, talking about you, doing damnable things, holding you down, holding you back, talking about your back. Perplexed. But you know what? As hard as they tried, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not to knock down, persecuted, not forsaken, cast down. Lord have, bam! One, two, three, four, five. He's out. Six, seven, eight, nine. How, how did he get up? He got the word of God in him. Word, word, the word got him up. See, a, a, a lesser a person without the Holy Ghost, they'd have just, you know, they'd been down to the 10 cup. He's out. But I don't care how close I get to 10, I'm always going to get up off the canvas. You know why? Because I'm a winner. That's what I am. Look, look at me. I'm a, look at, are y'all looking at me? I am a winner. Well, you say, you don't have a million dollars. I don't need a million dollars to be a winner. I'm, I'm winning the war of life. Right? The, the, the devil has been trying to get me for 57 years, and I'm still here. That, that means I'm a winner, and the devil is a loser. Sometimes you got to tell the devil you're a loser. Sometimes you got you got to count your blessings. Now, when, when, I, when I look at what God has done for me, I was praying the other day, and I was thanking the Lord for what he did for me when I was uh, at, at, at uh, Christ Temple Apostolic Church. And then I began to thank God for what he'd done for me in the California District Council, Pentecost Assemblies of the World. And then I began to thank him for what he did for me in the state of California. And then I began to thank him for what he's done for me at Greater Grace Worship Center and all the things he's blessed me with. And then I looked at my wonderful family and I looked at the fact that uh, how, how God has blessed him. I saw where there was trouble and now God has brought us back to God, brought, brought, God brought us back together. And I was counting my blessings and I was thanking God. And then my mother's birthday today, she would been 99 today, and I looked at I posted it on Facebook, and I looked at it, almost, tears almost came to my eyes because she was such a wonderful woman. I never saw her stray. I never saw her talk about, I'm giving up. I never saw her talk about quitting. That was my mom. She didn't say a lot. She, she wasn't boisterous. She wasn't the one that was in church you'd always hear her talking about, you know, here, look at me, look at me. She was quiet. She didn't say a whole lot. Matter of fact, if you didn't know she was there, you wouldn't, if you didn't see her, you wouldn't know she was there. Quiet, quiet. And I'd see her at home, and, and she had that quiet, just a quiet strength. And, and because I saw her, I knew that I didn't have to fight my way through life. I knew I could just depend on God. I don't know how many years my mom was saved. I think she was saved over 60 years. Uh, when she, let's see, she would, uh, she was 89, so she had been saved over 70 years. And in those 70 years, I never saw, I'm giving up, it's over. It's over. Mm -mm. I might have never, never saw her tell my dad, all right, hey, hey, CT, you got to go. If you don't go, I'm leaving. Never saw that. Never saw it. All I saw was constancy. She never drifted. If she drifted, I didn't see it. Hey, Amen. And it's good to have people in your life that don't drift. My pastor told me about running. He said, Brother Bob was a brother. I said, yes, Brother Bob. I said, I think I feel I won't run. And I'm not going to tell you what I'm about, you know, but I think I'm going to run. I'm, I'm tired. I'm going to run. And he said, David, I'm going to tell you, if you run, if you run, Everybody you talk to, the, the, if they're getting ready to run, you got to tell them to run like you ran. I never did forget that. And my father always told me, he said, Fosters don't run. Fosters don't run. 
And I thought about that. And every time that I had that inkling in my mind, I think I'm, I'm sick of this. I think I'm, a, you know, this is, uh, this is the end. Lord, you know, I've got, I have did good back here, but, you know, right here, right in here. Uh-uh, this is, uh -uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, th this is the time. If anybody got a right to run, I'm going to run. And as soon as I get my track shoes on, <laughs> my, my dad would call me Bud. He said, hey, Bud. He said, Foster's done run. Foster's done run. And, and because of them, running is not, is not part of my vocabulary. Even when I, when I want to run, I won't run. Because that, that was instilled in me. No, you're not going to run. You're not going to run away. You're not going to do it. And that's what's caused me not to drift. There's been some driftable things happen. I don't even know if that's, that's a word. But I'm going to use it tonight. Driftable. There's some driftable things that would have pulled me away in an instant. There, there was some, some I got a right to backslide stuff that happened to me. No, I didn't have a right to backslide because I had the power of God. The power of God kept me, right? 57 years. Y'all understand what the, how many years that is the devil had to tempt me, to try me, to get me out of here. And look at, I'm still here talking about how good God is when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Lord have mercy. Well, <laughs> I talked about abundance. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm going to move on. I talked about blood sucking sins. I talked about that. I'm going to move on. I want to get into uh, these dangers of drifting. I saw these with uh, a gentleman. I don't remember his name right now. Oh, here he is. Uh, Sunday Erontin. Sunday Errantin, and he was an evangelist. He said like this, that the, da the danger of drifting spiritually, it was an was a article that he wrote. It said, and I've already talked about this, less desire to study and meditate on the word of God. A Second Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved to God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, Second Timothy 2, 1 to 2, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Number seven, uh, less desire to worship and attend weekly services. I've talked about that already. Immediately, uh, drifting takes place. The zeal to worship God is no longer there because the weakness of the flesh has taken over the temple. Apostle Paul declared in, in Galatians 5 and 4, you have become estranged from Christ. Uh, you, uh, who, you who attempt to be justified by law, you, has fall, you have fallen from grace. Listen, have you ever heard about people that have been estranged, estranged in their marriage? It means they were married and they were close and then they pulled apart and they drifted apart and after a while they're getting ready to get a divorce. And then uh, number eight, uh, no, no more zeal to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a, a few scriptures you can look at in Matthew 28, 18 and 20, of course. That's where he said he's commanding every Christian to go uh, and teach the gospel teaching all men, and also Romans 1, 16, 17, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And 1 John 2, 15, don't love the world, and those things. So, uh, I'm going to try to get through tonight. Uh, uh, what are the causes of drifting? Here it is, number one, the, lo the love of money. 1 uh, Timothy 6, 10, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. You can look at that in your scriptures. A lack of reading the Bible. I've talked to you about that. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it. And of course, uh, what I mentioned before in Joshua 1, 8, the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but ye shall meditate in it day and night. Uh, and then it says you'll, your ways will, will prosper and then you'll have good success Lack of prayer, of course, First Thessalonians 5, 17, uh, pray without ceasing. First uh, Timothy 2, 1 talks about supplication, praying, intercession, and giving thanks. Uh, number four in this uh, last part here, what are the causes of drifting? 
and uh, what can you do to prevent it, uh, cause the lack of prayer, uh, giving more attention to worldly pleasures. I've seen so many people drift. Let me just park there for a minute. I might go a few minutes over, but I want to finish tonight. Uh, wait a minute. No, I'm not going to finish tonight. I thought I was nearing the end, but uh, I, I, I just found that there was another corner. You know, when preachers close doors, they say, I'm closing, I'm closing. And, and my church knows I got a lot of doors before I finally close. Uh, but I'm going to get to, I'm going to get all the way to uh, remedies. I'll talk about re remedies next week. I think it's too important to rush through. And so I'm trying to rush now, and I don't feel the Spirit telling me to, to keep rushing. But I do want to talk about worldly pleasure. Um, young people especially, um, and I was, I was young, I got the Holy Ghost when I was 17, and there are things that pull, you know, you want to you wanna be like the crowd, you want to go out there and dance, you want to you wanna, uh, uh, dress like them, you want to act like them, you want to cuss. I used to cuss, yeah. I know people see me now and say, no, you're too old to cuss. Well, I ain't been old all my life. I used to cuss, tried to drink beer when I was 12, smoked when I was 7, uh, cuss and uh, all that kind of thing and my parents were saved that lets you know you parents that have children just because you saved them I and your kids are always saved but uh, your prayers just like the prayers my dad and my mom for me I, I wasn't all that great up time I was 16 17 but by 18 bless God I was saved so never, don't give up on your kids. Never give up on your kids because your prayer, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And so I wasn't, uh, I wasn't an ideal kid. Uh, but one thing I knew that when, when push come to shove, uh, I had to come to the Lord. I came to church and uh, saw some young people praising God, tears in my eyes in the back bench of the church, sobbing like a baby. I got the Holy Ghost a few months later. And uh, other than that incident I told you about when I was going to college, uh, I haven't turned around. I thank God. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, uh, he says. And, and the fact that I'm a, who would have thought, when, if you would have seen me when I was 16, you, you say, no, ain't no, ain't no way he's going to be a preacher, let alone a pastor. I never know what God is going to have for your children. When they, when they saw me as a, as a, a teenager and, you know, uh, uh, on you know, listen to music in my room that they didn't approve of. I had the earphones on. You know, you, <laughs> I could talk about your kids in a minute. I, maybe I have a lesson on parents what you need to know about your children. Amen. I know some of you. Some of y'all is going through your mind right now. Oh, Lord, where are my kids at right now? Uh, but if you pray for them, prayer prayer is what brought me in. If, if it wasn't for the prayer of God, the, the, the prayer of my, of my parents, I don't know. Matter of fact, I don't know whether I'd be alive. I really don't. I don't know who I would be. I would be very different than I am. I know that. The Holy Ghost changed me. The Holy Ghost actually changed me. I'm, I'm different. And, and uh, the, the Lord knew when he gave me the Holy Ghost, he knew what I was made of. He knew what he wanted me to do. And, and I had some corridors to go down. You know, I wanted to go that way and hit my head. And had, Sometimes the Lord would just stop you from doing stuff until you're right where he wants you. You understand what I'm saying? And, and so it's not all just about drifting. It's about being in the will of God, you know, on the right road. You know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. Uh, and so I, I stopped for a minute, maybe because some, somebody out there uh, just needed a, that particular word. I hope it blessed you. Uh, but uh, giving more attention to worldly pleasures, uh, and that's what the prodigal son did, right? He just he wanted to do what he wanted to do in spite of what his father, but he came to himself. You know what I'm going to pray for right now? I think I'm going to stop right there because I'm, I'm going to pray for uh, backslidden children. I'm going to pray for, I just, I just feel that in my spirit. Uh, hey, uh, parent, man, woman, whoever you are, if you're looking at this, this uh, Bible class and you've got a, a child that has backslidden, they were in church and now you don't know where they are, or maybe your, your child is in jail, or maybe your child is run away. Uh, Sacramento uh, is kind of the, uh, one of the, primary uh, places in, in, in America 
where they have sex, uh, 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 they're trafficking young kids right here in America. Maybe you're one of the parents, you don't know where your child is, you've been, you've been praying, you've been crying. I'm gonna pray that your child will come back because God has a way of bringing us where we need to be. Cause, cause see, it's not, for you it's too hard. I know you can't do it. But with God, nothing is impossible. And, and in this pandemic, uh, you know, as a pastor, they tell me some of my members will never come back because pandemic has a way of, of making people lose their, their direction, losing their identity. And so I'm praying for uh, members of my church uh, that they don't drift away. I'm praying for adults and children. I'm praying for men and women, boys and girls. I'm praying for preachers and deacons. I'm praying for anybody is subject to drift away, especially when things are as they are. And you can become discouraged. But I'm going to pray for encouragement. I'm going to pray for your, uh, your, your child. I'm going to pray for your child because uh, you're looking at somebody that came back. That, that was lost. I was lost. I was lost. In my head, when I, when I, I had in my mind, when I, come, when I get 18, I'm going just, to just, cut loose. I was just, I, because I didn't care whether my dad was a preacher. I didn't care if my mom was saved. I didn't care if my sister was saved. I was going to get out there and just do my thing. And the Lord knew it. And so he said, let me save him before he goes crazy. And the Lord saved me three days from my 18th birthday. I've seen God do some, some things I've asked him for, and he did ex, 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 exactly what I asked for. And sometimes you've got to ask specifically, because if you say, Lord, just shower down some blessings, you don't really know it's coming. I had a situation just recently, and I specifically asked God for something, and he did it. And you know what? My face shot up. I said, and, and when I prayed, I said, Lord, I thank you did exactly what I asked you for. It was like a confirmation that the Lord said, hey, hey, I'm still with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake. you got to do something just to let you know I'm with you. And so I'm going to pray for uh, not only children that have uh, drifted. Maybe there's a, a mother, a father. Maybe there's a child out there, and you don't know where your mother is. You don't know where your father is. Uh, there, there's all kind of situations. And you know one thing I believe in this pandemic, it's time for the church to rise up and shine and to, and to show our strength. You know, we're, we're, we're not victims. This COVID-19 is not going to hurt us. This is when we stand up and show how much power we have. The, the darker it is, the lighter the light. And that's what we are. We're the light of the world. And, and I'm asking, matter of fact, this just came to my mind. Lord, I thank you. I'm asking for a revival. I'm not talking about just somebody coming and preach a message. I'm talking about saints re being revived. I'm talking about the, the joy of the Lord come back, the, the peace of God be in their mind again. I'm talking about I want to be what I used to be. I want to be glad, glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. That's what I want. That's what I want for the church. I'm, I'm jealous. I'm jealous for the church. I don't want us to be like, like the world. We're not like the world. We're not like the world. We're not depressed. I look, turn on TV. Uh, the, the news today, and there was all that depressing news. This is wrong, and that's wrong, and this is going wrong in Louisville, and this is going wrong in this city, and they've got cops in this city, and, and the National Guard in here, and political crisis here, and, and people dying of COVID here, and, 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 uh, and I said, good God, all this, this negativity, and the church needs to rise above so that they'll say, hey, there is balm in Gilead. There is medicine that can heal this situation. God is God. God is God. Father, I want you to bless, Lord, those that have loved ones that are drifting. Lord, those that personally need a revival in their soul. Those that haven't felt the power of God in a while. They feel, they feel, they, they don't feel I'm not getting what I need. I'm not feeling anything. I'm not, I'm not receiving anything. I'm, I'm looking for something. I don't know where it is. I just don't know what's going on. Lord, you know us. We're your children. And you know how to deal with us. Father, 
the, the, the child that's gone astray, the, 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 the mother, the father, the husband, the wife, Lord, whoever it is. And Lord, I ask you to bless them, oh God, to get through this pandemic. And Lord, let them trust in you with all their heart. God, I thank you right now. Your power, Lord, I'm asking that your power not only be there, but Lord, let there be a demonstration of your power. That's the reason that that uh, the, the multitude came to you. That's why uh, you were able to have 5,000 people to feed. They came to you because they knew who you were. They knew what you could do. Hallelujah. When the when the, the this this man had a friend that needed to be healed and they couldn't get in, they tore the roof off because they knew who was inside could do something for their their friend. Father, let the world know that the church can do something for them. Lord, that those that are in agony and pain and discomfort, are scared about what's gonna happen, scared about what tomorrow's gonna bring, uneasy about their own situation. Father, let the church rise. Let the church, let, let there be a revival of prayer, a revival of who we are. We are strong. We are courageous. We are bold. And we can do everything you told us to do. God, I, just, I feel kind of radical right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, God, let the church raise up. Let the church be strong. Hallelujah, let it begin with me. Let it begin with us. Hallelujah. Bless you, Father. Mm. I'm sorry, y'all. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Whew. Thank you. Well, the Lord just... I feel he's shaking us up. He doesn't want business as usual. Hallelujah. Uh, I've already, I've already begun changing. Yep, that's right. This this morning when I got up, the Lord challenged me on some things, and and I've begun. I, I want I want the church to be strong. Not bus- This is not business as usual. The church will never be the same. This pandemic has changed us forever, but I want it to change it for the good and not for the bad. I, I trust that uh, that you won't drift. I'll finish. I, there's just too much here. I was going to try to rush through, but the Lord stopped me. And now I know why, because he wanted me to pray for the strength of Zion. Bless me indeed. Enlarge my border. Let your hand be upon me. That I not cause to receive pain, bless me above my brethren, favor me, for God is God. Bless you all. I'm praying for you. See you next time. Well, I guess there's going to be an announcement. I'll be back in a minute. I kind of got off the schedule here because God is just, he's speaking to my heart. He's speaking to my heart. The Lord wants the church to rise up and be counted. Not just an institution, not just a building, not just a parking lot, not just an online service, not just a Facebook post. He wants, he wants the church to be the church. And if there ever was a time for the church needing to be the church, it's right now. I'll be back in a minute. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. 
Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done. This Bible class is a little different, a little longer. And I thought I was just going to do a short prayer, but let me just say something else to you. There's something in the air. There's, I sense something, a big something. Uh, we've talked about the coming of the Lord for generations, ever since the first century. They said, the Lord is coming, the Lord is coming. But now the conditions seem to be so particularly ripe for the coming of the Lord. Everything that the Bible has predicted to be necessary for his coming is already there. I, read, I saw a, a presentation by the public broadcasting system about AI. Uh, and it, I won't go into the, the detail, but basically said that um, there is now a possibility that AI can recognize virtually every face on the, uh, every person's face on the earth. Uh, and we talk about uh, the devil having the potential if you don't join him, you can't buy nor sell. Uh, that's already here. Wars and rumors of war, that's here. Uh, racial unjust, that's here. Uh, caste system, rich versus the poor, black versus white, it's here. Uh, economic upheaval, that's here. Pestilence, that's here. And, and there is such, a, such animosity between people that I've never seen, even Christian versus Christian. People that love say they love the Lord and they're fighting like they don't, they're not even saved. Uh, they've lost their way. They trust in government more than they trust in God. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. And I can't even see the reason with them. They, it seems like when I share with them what I'm feeling, it's like, you know, you know what are you talking about? And I'm, I'm, I'm a nobody. Nobody knows who I am. But God does. And God is telling me that we really need to get ready because catastrophe can be as early as the end of this year or before. I read a lot. I study a lot. I study people. I study things. I study organization. I study government. Uh, and... I won't go into detail now. Maybe uh, I'll do some lesson sometime or another. But can I tell you, if you if you don't have Jesus, if if you're not if you're not saved, I'm not talking about going to church. A lot of people go to church, you know. But I'm talking about saved, a committed life to the Lord, you know, filled with the Spirit, and joined to His name by baptism. If you don't have that, you're taking a chance to being left. You know, no, nobody thinks they're going to miss the train until they miss it. Nobody thinks they're going to miss the plane until they miss it. 
You know, I've been catching a plane all my life. I've never missed a plane, but it only takes one, one miss. Because on this, this transportation I'm talking about, when the Lord gets us out of here, there's not another train to catch. There's not another ticket to buy. And I, I'm talking to you particularly if you're not saved. If, if you don't know what it means to be committed to the Lord, you know, we're here for you. There are other churches that really believe truth. Don't, don't go to people that make you feel good. No, go to people that tell you the truth. Because the Bible said you should know the truth. The truth is going to make you free. Not what feels good, but it's the truth. And sometimes the truth was hard for me. Sometimes I didn't want to know, didn't want to hear the truth. But it's the truth that's kept me all these years. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you that are on the edge. Those of you that have been drifting, you know who you are. You know if you're not as strong as you used to be. You know if you're not committed as you used to be. Won't you come back? Won't you consider all that the Lord has done for you? Won't you consider coming back to him, loving him? Because there, there, there's going to be a reckoning. And, and if, if, I'm, if I'm seeing and feeling this right, there is going to be a revival that you've never seen before. Everybody won't come because the Bible says that he'll, he pours out his, his uh, wrath on the children of disobedience. Everybody won't hear, but there's going to be those of us. Many are called. Few are cho chosen, right? He said, there's a broad way, and many that go in there, and there's a, a gate, and it's narrow, and very few that find it. I want you to be one of those. I want us to be part of this great, the church triumphant. Church is going to make a difference. All right, I'm way over. All right, about 15 minutes over, but I hope you stayed tuned. I hope you heard what I'm saying. I hope you believe the word of God. All right, that's it. Good night. God bless.